Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Queer and Present Danger with me, Justin Elizabeth Sayer. Thanks, Joe's Pub, for hosting these once a month little talks, little check ins we get to do with one another. How lucky are we? Oh, see, I, I, this is the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Once you get in front of the camera, I just keep grooming, and I don't know that it's appropriate. I wish I was ready, set, it, go, you know? But here we are, making new rules all the time, figuring out new ways to enjoy the world as we're sheltered apart, and also figuring out ways to be annoyed. That's what Queer and Present Danger is here, ladies and gentlemen. A chance for me to yell at the camera for five to seven minutes about something ridiculous. Not big ridiculous things like a president who says he's immune to a disease all of a sudden, even though he still keeps coughing. And uh, a, a nation on the brink of either a civil war or a total upheaval. Not stuff like that. No, no, no. This is trifling bullshit that apparently I still have the energy to get mad about. Isn't that crazy? I, it feels crazy to me. Today's topic is a little moment I'd like to just reflect on... Uh, well, I, I want to say this thoughtfully so that people don't get it twisted. Nico Tortorelli. Why? I, I, I get that he's hot, and, I, and for that, gay men will do so much. So much. We don't care. We don't care. If you've got abs and are willing, we apparently, even if you're not willing, really, talk about that. Talk about that. Deal with that for a moment, fellas. But, you know, we'll listen to a lot of, a lot of bullshit. A lot of it. We'll put up with it. We'll just kind of zone out and repeat either share lyrics or Madonna lyrics to yourself. One or the other. I go with Diana Ross, but, you know, to each his own. Recently, Nico Tortorelli, who apparently is the only gay person that can be interviewed anywhere about anything. You know, there's so many fascinating gay people in the world. Fascinating. Myself included. And, and people can say, oh, you're, you're sounding so jealous. You're being so jealous of Nico. I'm not. Believe me, girl. I got my own shit going on, and I'm pleased as punch about it. I don't need to be it. I don't need to be all... I'm, I'm good. I'm good. But I also realize that I'm fucking fascinating. And you would think... You would think... Maybe they want to ask me a question or two, the gay media. But no, they like to stick with Nico. Why? Because, again, he's hot. Let me tell you something about hot people. All right, and I don't mean this about all hot people, but like a lot of hot people. Sometimes great people aren't hot. Being hot and being smart are not automatically tied together. Now, some of you will sit there in your own bitter pills, sipping a cup of tea, just mm, often they're not, you know, just being horrible. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. But yes, you can be hot and dumb. You can be very hot and dumb. You can be very ugly and dumb. You know? The, the dumb, luckily for all of us, is just totally indiscriminate. Anybody can be a real fucking idiot. On the other hand, there are a lot of smart, intellectual people who are, you know, fine. <laughs> what a stunning admission. Just fine. They're fine. They look nice. They look nice. But you know, when you're on when you're in the inter the world of the internet, and you know this for yourself, you're gonna click on something hot more than you're gonna click on, you know, a Cokie Roberts retrospective. Just saying. Not even saying that Cokie wasn't hot, I'm sure, to whoever was sleeping with Cokie Roberts. She was quite a number. But uh, you didn't realize you were getting a lot of Cokie Roberts material, but here we are. And I understand that you gotta you gotta get that clickbait, you know, baby. You gotta show a little lab if you want things to, you know, boil on the internet because we're there to be, you know, visually stimulated at every 
given moment of every day. God forbid I didn't see a ding-dong halfway through the day. I mean, what would happen to me? But anyway, recently, but often, recently and often, Nico was, was asked about masculinity, of which he is just so... It's like talking with Judith Butler, just knows everything. And Nico said that bottoming was the most masculine thing a man could do. And I, I just have to say this to you. Okay? I object to that. I object to that totally. Because... Why, why, now I'm going to get totally pinko, radical, lefty, get ready for it. Why are we putting on that kind of paradigm on gay sex? Why are we saying, now I understand you're, you're going to argue with me, you're going to say all these things. Oh, he means well, you know what? You know how you know how, you know who, how people mean well? You see them listening. You see them paying attention. You see them realizing that maybe they're not the smartest person in the room, and sometimes they should just shut their fucking mouth. Because <laughs> I don't need I don't need a binary paradigm on the kind of sex I'm having. What if, what if, imagine this, if you could. What if we could just see each other as people with needs, and some people want to be filled, and some people want to do the filling? And that doesn't say anything about them. That just talks to a specific set of guidelines. What if we could just do that for a minute? Just imagine a world in which there were holes and answers to those holes. Don't give me your pseudo-heteronormative bullshit and try to spin it like you're some queer savior. Because I gotta tell you, there are a lot smarter people out there who've been talking about this a lot longer than you, who are not as hot, and have a lot more intelligent things to say. Now you can object, I hope you do. But it annoys me on no end when you come out of the closet one minute and you got the answer to everybody else's problems the second. Jesus Christ, just, you enter a movement from the back, ladies and gentlemen. Just everybody, cool your jets. And I know how it is when you're first coming out. Come on, I know how it is. You're crazy, and you're clicking tongues, and you're calling your mother girl. I get it. But maybe, maybe we all have a moment of a little humility, a little grace, where we can imagine that just as dumbness is widespread, some of that dumbness may have touched me too, and I should have a little humility when trying to speak for, I don't know, a whole group of people that you cannot get to agree on anything. I don't hate Nico. I think he's fine. He's very attractive. He seems like a nice person. I don't know. But I do object to getting told that my sex and everything I'm trying to do about my sex, and with my sex, and the people I'm having it with, is feeding into a paradigm that it's trying to fight. So, I would just like to say, everybody take a minute, breathe, and realize that in this time of so much unknown, you don't know shit, and maybe, in those moments, you should listen. This has been Queer and Present Danger. We'll see you next month. And make sure you follow me on Justin Elizabeth Sayer on Instagram and Justin Liz Sayer on Twitter. Thank you so much for Joe's Pub to continue to have me on these wonderful videos. And we'll talk very soon. Bye-bye.